Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I've been trying to film this all week, but it has been very difficult. It's been a crazy hectic week for me. This video is going to showcase my weight loss journey and I will be showing you and talking to you um, how it started and where it's headed. I want to get down and dirty with you guys. I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about my weight loss journey. I will be showing you before and after pictures, videos maybe, I think videos. Definitely gonna show you my body as it looks currently right now. So if you are interested in learning more about my journey, this will be definitely like a little vlog of what my weight loss journey entails, where it's headed, what are my expectations, what my goals are, and kind of just where I'm headed. Um, so I hope that this is something that you find interesting and it's something that you can relate to. And I hope that it's something uh, or it gives you maybe some ideas for yourself or some answers um, to certain types of questions. I will be going over the different myths of obesity and things like that um, and, and myths that I've heard about weight loss and different things that you can do to make it work for yourself. So if you're interested in knowing about my weight loss journey and kind of what I've learned along the way, then please stay tuned. Hit like. <laughs> So I'm gonna talk to you about my weight loss journey. I did my makeup, I changed my shirt, I feel new. I feel like you guys can believe me now that I have a little bit of makeup. <laughs> Anyways, um, before I get into like showing you my body and showing you like different things, different pictures, which I will be inserting pictures and videos into this one, definitely a lot of befores that you will be seeing. Um, you will be seeing a lot of during. So I will be vlogging during my process and then you'll be seeing the after as well. So I hope that this is something that interests you. I hope this is something that you are looking into or maybe you just want to hear information and want to see other people experience the same thing that you're experiencing or maybe in the same realm. And I hope that this answers a lot of questions or doubts, any, um, misperceptions that are out there i hope that i hope that basically this helps you first and foremost let me just say that i am not a doctor if you have any medical conditions such as obesity um diabetes pcos anything pertain pertaining to your health please consult with your doctor. Do not take my word for it. I'm just sharing my experience and what I have been going through and what I am currently going through. So this is not a generalization for everyone. This is just what I am going through and I hope that this helps you. Some so to give you a brief background on my weight issues, I, if you have not seen uh, any of my other videos, please do so. There's a lot of details in there as well. But to briefly recap all of that information, I did not start gaining weight till I was about uh, 11 years old. At 11 years old, I got my period, I hit puberty, I just started sprouting everywhere, right? As my boobs got bigger, my butt and thighs got bigger, um, when I was little, I always had a big butt and I always had thunder thighs because it runs in my family. And my mom thought that I was going to be a good runner because of the way my, le my legs were shaped and the way my butt was formed. However, that was not the case. So when I got my first period and, and puberty hit, I started gaining a lot of weight in my tummy. And not necessarily because I ate a lot. Yes, my mom was 
the, 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 the homemaker, right? So she was always cooking. Um, but even when we were cooking typical Puerto Rican foods, right? We didn't know then what we know now. And in a po typical Puerto Rican home, you're always eating rice, you're always eating beans, meat, but they always add some vegetable or some salad. So I'm not afraid or unaware of salad and vegetables. There's just certain things that I just, my palate as a kid, I wouldn't eat. So had nothing to do with my mom not introducing salads and veggies to me and healthy foods. She has always done so since I was very, very little. I have always been a picky eater. So whatever I ate that felt good and delicious and satisfying to me, that's what I would eat. Unbeknownst to me, of course, you know, as a kid, you're growing up, you don't really know anything about life. You don't know facts about your health. You don't know anything. So unbeknownst to me, it was a lot of things that were unhealthy and just would not agree with my body. As I got older, it just got worse and worse. You know, I, my, my hips formed, my whole body was was formed. However, I always had a belly. And I was always self-conscious because in a Puerto Rican household, every family who sees a girl or a guy who's thick, fat, or chubby, they always call them golda or goldo, which means fat in English. Um, and they mean it as a term of endearment, but to me, I grew up feeling self-conscious and I really was really skinny at 11 years old. Even though I had a little bit of a belly, it was nothing that was out there. It was never big. It was never a basketball size. It was just a little bit, a little bit of a gut that happens. It was a little bloated that happens when you get your period. So to me, I was always self-conscious of my body. I felt like I was disproportionate when in fact, I really had a beautiful body. And my mom always told me, Emily, you have a beautiful body. You have a beautiful smile, use it. And I never really listened to my mom because I was really self-conscious about that. So, and that was all through my pre-teens. And in going into my teens, you know, I went from a size 14 in pants to a size 16 in pants. And as I got older, that kept growing. So I went from an 18 to a 20, which is the size that I am now. Um, I am between 18 and 20 because I've lost 16 pounds so far, which I'm super excited about. I'm super happy. It has been a long road and it has been a long journey. But before I get to my weight loss and that, I'm going to give you some backgrounds. So that is kind of how it happened for me growing up. That is how I gained weight. I just naturally gained weight. Um, and I realize now that because I was given prednisone since I was a baby, prednisone makes you gain weight. It makes you super bloated and it does not allow you to lose weight the way you want to lose weight. Also, it increases your hunger and it makes you feel like you're never satisfied and food is just never, never enough. So that is one of that was one of my issues where a lot of my cravings for sweet things, um, sometimes feeling unsatisfied with food would cause me to slightly overeat. I wasn't an overeater, but whenever I would slightly overeat, it was due to that medicine. It was due to the steroid that I would get for asthma. All right, just some background. you have all of these steroids being pumped into you you have all of these treatments being administered to you and as a child you don't know what's going on but as an adult you start to figure out the common denominator and what is happening and it took me a long time to figure out that a lot of my weight issues and health issues were related to a lot of side effects of different steroids 
and medicine that I have been pumped for not even years, decades since I was born. So with that said, I would say be very careful what you're given and take it as the doctor gives it to you and don't, you know, take it any more than that. Be careful with the side effects. Learn very well what kind of medicine you're taking. And if you can do a detox after you do it so it can regulate your body. We will get into detoxes in another video. But for now, I just wanted to, I just wanted to mention it. So I currently had COVID that turned into pneumonia. So I'm under the effect right now of prednisone. I just finished last week my last dose of prednisone. So I'm like a little bit swollen. Like you can see my double chin is inflamed. Parts of my body, my belly, my thighs, they're still a little um, swollen from the medicine. But this time around, I did not gain weight. I ended up losing weight. I lost six pounds during the month that I had COVID and pneumonia. I believe it's because I could not stop drinking water. I still, to this day, have not stopped drinking water. It's like my body is craving it and it desires it, so I'm constantly drinking. But I noticed that usually with prednisone, while I'm taking prednisone, I gain weight. I eat a lot. It's an insatiable thing. Like food, it does not satisfy me when I'm on prednisone, which is what causes me to gain weight because I eat, 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 and eat. And it's like, it's really bad. It's re Sometimes it's really hard to control. This time around, because of COVID, because I lost my sense of smell, my sense of taste, even though it was a short period of time, I didn't want to eat. My body was rejecting all kinds of food. It was very limited what I could eat, what I could taste. I was mainly drinking water. I had a dry mouth, dry throat, and it was constantly bothering me to the point where I was annoyed at the fact that like even the water was not um, giving me that moisture that I needed in my mouth. So I was constantly drinking water, constantly drinking water, and I feel like that is a common denominator in in my weight loss. Thankfully, it has stayed off. Those pounds that I lost stayed off and I continue to lose the weight and I'm very, very thankful and very happy about that. Any daily struggle that I'm having right now currently is just getting my body back to normal. So getting my body back to a pattern where I can just be mobile again. Um, for the month during COVID and pneumonia, I was in bed constantly. I would only get up to go to the bathroom or take a shower. I wasn't really cooking. So whenever I would cook, it would be like soups and broths and things like that. Because it's really cold outside, I like to do my cardio outdoors. So I have to figure out a way to do it indoors. And usually when I do it indoors, I do dancing. So. I have not started that yet because my body is still recuperating. My body is now just getting back to normal. Now I'm falling into a regular routine where I can like eat, cook, shower, actually do things around the house, clean, pick up, do things that I was not able to do last month or even the month before. Um, also, if you've seen my other videos, you have seen that I have struggled with anemia and, and it's iron deficiency anemia. I've had four blood transfusions already and that causes you to be very exhausted, very um, tired, and it makes you feel super fatigued. I will get more into detail about that later on in this. Some weight loss myths that I've heard are Obesity is about willpower. That is not true. If, if we have the willpower to lose the weight and be skinny, everybody would be skinny. I believe that there are a lot of health reasons related to obesity. There, It is not simple as just eating less and exercising and or e even eating healthy sometimes. Sometimes you need medical intervention. For example, diabetes, that causes you to gain weight. 
And if you are overweight or even obese, you can get into dangerous territories and your body can shut down on you. PCOS is a fertility situation that happens in women, right? So it's hormonal. And all of that does not allow you to lose weight. In fact, it makes you gain weight. Some PCOS um, cases are worse than others. So some have, uh, some women have facial hair, other women have um, body hair or body acne or back acne. And there's just so many different symptoms to, to PCOS that it's crazy. I just discovered last year in 2021, around May, that I have PCOS. And the reason I found that out is through blood work. I don't have physical symptoms like hair around my body or my face, but I do have it in my blood work. So I do have internal symptoms. For example, I do not ovulate. So it is caused through LH and progesterone levels being around the same and not causing my eggs to drop. So I do have eggs. I am very fertile. They're just not dropping into my uterus the way they're supposed to. Therefore, I am not ovulating property, properly. I am not able to conceive on my own which is why I am going through this weight loss journey because I learned that when you lose weight, it can regulate some of your infertility issues. The other myth about weight loss that I have heard is you have to eat less and you have to move more. That means, when people say that, they mean that you have to eat less food and exercise. That is, so totally crap and i will tell you why if you eat healthy there's no need to eat less so you want to have balanced meals it doesn't have to be three meals a day if you don't want to i certainly do not eat three times a day um i eat three times a day when i can i'm trying really hard to eat three times a day um but mainly i eat twice a day and I'll have like healthy snacks in between. If I get hungry, I'll have like string cheese or cottage cheese with pineapple, whatever I can find to help satisfy that craving. And usually having a protein like cheese, like a solid protein like cheese, will calm the hunger down and take it away completely and you won't feel hungry for the rest of the day. Yes, it's good to exercise. Yes, you have to be mobile. Also eating less is not healthy. You have to make sure that you have the right amount of food and the right proportion on your plate. You never want to overeat. So I eliminated second plate eating in my household. So when I feed myself or my boyfriend, I make sure that the plate that we have is well balanced enough in proportions each um, so that when we eat, we feel satisfied. We never want to feel full because feeling full is going to take you to a not so good place. But you want to feel satisfied where you feel like, wow, I, my hunger is over. My body has registered that I've eaten. I am going to wash this down with water or crystal light or whatever you, you drink that is healthy and um, you're, you, you feel satisfied, like you don't feel hungry anymore. Um, another myth that I heard was that carbs make you fat. Um, that's not entirely true. If you eat low carbs and you have a high protein intake, which is what I do, you're going to lose the weight. You just have to learn how to modern, uh, not modern, how to appropriately proportion everything so if you're going to do a carb for example carbs are considered pasta rice bread potatoes you know anything starchy like that if you're going to do any kind of carb even tortillas things like that biscuits um, if you're going to do anything like that make sure that it is small so you want that to be small and you want your protein and your meat to be big. So any, any meats and any salads you want more of on your plate and less of the rice or the 
potatoes or the pasta. So I can do a pasta salad, but I can I have to make sure that I have enough protein in there. So it could be cheese, it could be meat, um, it could be vegetables. Make sure that I have enough of that to counter counteract the pasta. Again, this has been my experience with food. I am not a nutritionist. I am not a doctor. I'm just saying my experience. Another myth that I heard was that fat makes you fat. Um, if you eat bad fats, yes, it can increase the bad fat in your body and it can um, harm you in some way. But if you eat proper fats like avocado, avocado is a good fat, it will help you lose weight. So I make sure that my meals have everything properly connected and oriented together. So if um, I love avocados, so I try to buy as much avocados as I can so I can eat it during the week. But if I don't have avocados, then I will eat my good fats in other ways like avocado oil, olive oil, things like that to make my food you know feel good and elevated and it it has helped me lose weight so th those are a little bit a few things that i've heard that are incorrect and i've learned along the way that my body is different and it does not align with these fad diets into fad diets there is ketogenics there is atkins there is ww which is weight watchers there is south beach diet i have tried a few of them like weight watchers i have tried um jenny craig back in the day slim fast back in the day um i've tried wow that makes me feel old <laughs> i've also tried um atkins and that didn't go so well. However, now in my life, I have stayed away from these diets and these fads because these are only temporary fixes. I have done the research and I have read up and learned about my blood type. I have learned about my own body and I have learned what my body can accept and what it can absorb and what helps it lose weight in addition to me exercising and doing my cardio. So for example, losing weight is 80% what you eat and 20% what you do. So for me, what works for my body is eating superfoods like avocado, um, celery, you know, healthy foods like that, spinach, also including the good carbs and the good fats. So if I do have a carb like potatoes, I make sure that I have a little bit of potato, like I said, a little bit of potato. Um, if, if I'm gonna do meats, my meats are usually, I really love to have chicken and fish and that's helped me lose a lot of weight, just leaving red meat out. But because I am iron deficiency, I started reintroducing red meats um, to my diet. So whatever I do, um, like the other day I made lamb with a side of salad and mashed potatoes, and that was so satisfying, so filling, so delicious. And um, I would have never thought that I would have liked lamb, and I did. I did two racks of lamb, and it came out delicious. So as long as you have, all this to say that, as long as you have a well-balanced meal, you will lose the weight. You just have to learn what works for you. So for some people, red meats 
is disgusting and they don't want to eat it so then you just choose chicken and fish if you don't like chicken and fish and you rather be a vegan then you eat your vegan foods if you just want to be a vegetarian then you eat your vegetarian foods whatever works for you if if eating vegetables and fruits all day long is healthy for you and it's helping you lose weight and it feels good and it's it's making your life so much easier and happier, then that is what works for your body. That is what your body is accepting. If being a vegan and and eating all of that, all of that delicious vegan food, if that's what's working for you, making you happy, and it, it's making your life a lot better, then hey, go for it. Do whatever works. For us carnivores, I suggest you try different things. Eat red meat, eat the chicken, eat the fish, try it out eat the seafood. I eat seafood. I love seafood. As long as it's healthy and as long as it's well balanced. I like to make my own salads at home and so I like to make my own salad dressings and every salad dressing comes out different. I kind of just do it in the moment. I never write them down and my boyfriend says I need to bottle them because they're so good. As we go along together in this journey, I'll show you how I cook and kind of how I prepare my meals so that you can kind of get an idea of what to do to make it balanced, to make it feel satisfying, and to make it work for you and your body. Some negative things I've heard in society and come out of the mouths of comedians, like, oh, you're fat because you eat too much, or you're fat because you don't exercise, or you're fat because you're lazy, or you're lazy because you're fat. You're fat because you eat too much sweets or junk food. People want to uh, go to the doctor and say that they're obese when um, really they just need to close their mouths and not eat. These are negative things that I have heard about obesity. And to be honest, it pisses me off. If it was so easy to lose weight by not eating, and by by holding back on food, I will guarantee that there would be a lot more skinny people on this earth than there is right now. And the reason why obesity and morbid obesity is such an epidemic right now is because a lot of us did not realize that we had health issues that contribute to our body's weight gain. So for example, hypothyroidism, that is something very serious and it makes you gain weight and it doesn't allow you to lose the weight even when you want to. So like these shows like My 600 Pound Life or <clears throat> excuse me, all of these all of these um obese people that go in for bariatric bariatric surgery, um all of that is health related. If it was so easy as to eat normal, I guarantee you that everyone would be skinny like 20 every 50 percent of this population maybe even more would be skinny if they held out on food and if they ate less and walked more it is not that simple you need to make sure that you're eating healthy foods that you're drinking water you can drink um certain types of drinks but you got to make sure that the sugar count is at a healthy level Everything needs to be well balanced. When they say well balanced, they want you to make sure that you have the proper things that your body can take. So a proper amount of meat, a proper amount of vegetables and salad, and a proper amount of your starches. Okay? Do not listen to the naysayers. Do not listen to these negative things because it is just going to discourage you in a way that you will never um fit like it will never make you feel good about yourself but the truth is is that if you're working with your doctors and you and your doctor have a health plan in motion for you to lose weight and you are consistent with that plan losing weight will be easy it will never be hard but if you're in a journey like me then Follow along in my journey, listen to my videos, and watch me struggle, watch me succeed, watch me win, watch me fail, 
let's do it together. Like we're not alone in this. I, I know, I know for sure I'm not alone and I want to make sure that I reach out and this message gets out to all of you that we can do this. We can absolutely do this. You can lose the weight. We can win together and we can feel good about ourselves without anyone saying anything negative about it. This is, we do it for us and nobody else. Okay, so this is what I look like right now. I have a belly still that needs to go down. I'm wearing a sports bra so my boobs look weird. But this is what I look like. Do you see that? All right, so I am currently 289. Again, I lost 16 pounds total. Um, I lost 10 pounds in November and I lost six pounds now in December when I hit COVID. And this is just, I have my belly, my little fupa down here. And um, it's not the greatest thing in the world, but I am on my way to weight loss. I have my little wings here, right? A lot of arm fat, which I will be working out. My boobs are like double D, but again, they look super weird because I am wearing a sports bra. So please excuse that. And I have my little double chin. Again, I'm still a little bit swollen from the prednisone, but like I said, that is all gonna go away um, as time goes by. And then I have my big butt. <laughs> so that's what I look like right now. All right, so my weight loss goal after surgery, I would love to be 130 pounds. That's my main goal. Um, am I gonna get there? I don't know, but that's my main goal. If I can make it to 130 pounds, after my, my weight loss surgery, I would be so excited and super happy. My expectations after surgery, I know the doctor told me that I would be doing a rapid weight loss. So after surgery, you lose about a little bit over 100 pounds rapidly, which means that you lose it fast because of the type of surgery that you're gonna get. Me, I am getting the gastric sleeve um, surgery. It's not bypass. Bypass is basically a rerouting of your intestines um, into, or your stomach and your intestines. The sleeve is basically where they cut a huge portion of your stomach and they leave you a skinny tube of your stomach, your body, and they don't reroute anything. It's just, it's everything stays the same. It's just that your stomach is thinner. So essentially what that means is that after surgery, I will only be able to fit about six to eight ounces of food in my little pooch. However, all of this extra skin that I have, I do have to um, go to the gym and do weight training to tone my body, eliminate the loose skin and tighten my body. So you guys are gonna see all of that. <laughs> I uh, haven't joined a gym yet, um, but I plan to. It's just, I have to do things step by step and little by little because my body has really gone through a lot during the year of 2021. I went through multiple blood transfusions. I went through multiple iron IV infusions and I need to go back for another iron IV infusions. I might record that day and um, let you guys in on that one. So. I have to give my body a minute to just like recover. And on top of everything, I caught COVID that turned into pneumonia and I was literally in bed for about a month, literally four weeks. So I showed you what I look like on camera. I, sh what I look like right now, I should say. I talked about my weight loss expectations after surgery and my weight loss goals. My goal is 130 pounds and I would love to be a size 9, 10 in jeans, at least 10, 12 in jeans. Um, probably 10, 12 would be the best size because I have big th hips. 
a big my boat my booty does not go nowhere it's it's big and I have big thighs so um 11 12 would be ideal in jeans um but and a size 14 in dress would be ideal um but we'll see like I said those are my goals I, I'm, I'm hoping that I get there but I am not going to feel uh, stress about it like I'm not going to stress it if I get there oh my god I've hit my goal and I'm super happy and excited if I don't get there then we keep trucking and we keep trying till we do um, even if I got to a size um, 14 16 in jeans like 14 15 16 in jeans that would be ha that would be that would make me happy because it would be the size that I was before I gained all this extra weight okay so i used to be at 305 that's how that was the highest weight i was 305 and now i'm at 289 so that's a total of 16 pounds lost which i am super super happy about super stoked about what made me decide to do bariatric surgery um besides all of my health issues and all of my health ailments um the major goal I have in life is to become a mom and to carry my own baby and when I learned that I had PCOS I was devastated it's not ideal for a woman to hear that you are not conceiving because you're not ovulating and in order to conceive it's very important that you ovulate it because the sperm needs to meet the egg and in order for the sperm to meet the egg your egg needs to drop into the uterus at a certain time for all of that to happen however that being one of the major reasons also my iron deficiency scare with my anemia and everything that has happened thankfully i am stable now however all of that became an, a very important factor and i learned that with bariatric surgery it was going to fix or correct a lot of my infertility issues a lot of my health issues and I would be healthy and live a healthy and long life. The way I have always wanted, the way I have dreamed, it would also give me my independence back. I have been, because of all of these health issues, I have been literally two years stuck in my house because I, my body is not allowing me to be my 100% independent mobile self the way that a woman should be. I should be able to take a shower, get dressed, go to work, come back, sh you know, cook, do whatever I need to do without feeling stressed in any way and without feeling so fatigued, without feeling like I'm dying. And literally for two years, that's exactly how I felt when I was home. I'm grateful that I'm stable now and that my body and my health is headed in the right direction. However, this is the time for me to do what I need to do and to focus all of my time and energy on me and my weight loss surgery. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm doing all of my homework. I'm doing what they're telling me to do. And it's been working for me so far. So again, all of this is to get to the bigger picture, which is to carry a healthy baby to become a mom and just live life to the fullest. It has always been my dream to become a mother. I wanted to become a mother earlier in life, but life works differently than we have ever, ever expected it to be. So I'm, I'm really excited for this new journey that I'm on. And I'm excited for everyone who's following me. If you have watched this video, all the way to the end and you've heard every detail and ev and you've seen every clip and photo that I added in here and, and seen myself, <laughs> I want to thank you. I really appreciate your support. I appreciate you listening to me and I hope that this is encouraging. I hope this is uplifting and I hope it helps you in your journey some way, somehow. I definitely want to convey that I am all about being 
positive. I, I love bo po body positivity and I love living a healthy, positive lifestyle and positive mindset. And I hope that it transmits through this th through these videos into your home because I know what it is to feel lonely in your weight loss journey. I've done it before, but this time around, I'm just claiming my truth. I'm owning my truth and I'm putting it out there in the world because I am manifesting that I will get to my goal of losing all this weight and getting to 130 pounds. And I am going to be so healthy that I'll be able to get pregnant and that I'll be able to carry my baby and have a beautiful child and live my life as a happy mom, a happy um, homemaker or a happy businesswoman. I don't know, wherever life takes me. I just wanna be happy and healthy and do it well. Okay, so if you've heard this video to the very end, you've seen every detail, please subscribe to my channel and thank you so much for watching. Um, hit that like button, comment below. What was your favorite part of the video? What are you most looking forward to? Let me know in the comments. I love reading your comments and I will definitely respond to them. Hit the notification bell button so you can stay tuned to the next videos that I will be uploading. Tuned to my um, Instagram as well at Life with Ems um, so that you can be up to date of when I'm releasing the next video. Don't listen to the negative, listen to the positive, believe in the positive, manifest it, throw it out into the universe, pray it to God, give it to God, let it go, and it will come back to you a hundredfold, I promise. Thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.